After studying this module, you would be able to firstly learn about the key concepts and major constructs of the existential approach to counselling. Secondly, understand the counselling process involved in the existential paradigm. Thirdly, examine the counselling techniques and procedures of the existential perspective. And finally, evaluate the contributions of existential counselling. Introduction Existential counselling embodies many of the values and viewpoints of Carl Rogers' person-centred counselling discussed in the earlier modules. However, according to Wantris, and I quote, existential philosophy for me fills in where Rogers left off. It defines the issues that must be approached in counselling in broad strokes, which are love, death, suffering and meaning, unquote. Existential counselling can best be described as a philosophical approach that influences a counsellor's therapeutic practice. As such, it is not a separate school of therapy or a neatly defined model with specific techniques. Thus, this module will focus on some of the existential ideas and themes that have significant implications for the existentially oriented practitioner. The existential approach rejects the deterministic view of human nature espoused by orthodox psychoanalysis and radical behaviorism. Psychoanalysis sees freedom as restricted by unconscious forces, irrational drives and past events. Behaviorists see freedom as restricted by socio-cultural conditioning. In contrast, existential counsellors acknowledge some of these facts about the human situation but emphasize our freedom to choose what to make of our circumstances. This approach is grounded on the assumption that we are free and therefore responsible for our choices and actions. We are the authors of our lives and we draw up the blueprints for their design. A basic existential premise is that we are not victims of circumstances because to a large extent we are what we choose to be. A major aim of counselling is to encourage clients to reflect on life, to recognise their range of alternatives and to decide among them. Once clients begin the process of recognizing the ways in which they have passively accepted circumstances and surrendered control, they can start on a path of consciously shaping their own lives. Van Duresen Smith in the years 1988 and 1997 writes that existential counseling is not designed to cure people in the tradition of the medical model. Rather, clients are viewed as being sick of life or awkward at living. They need help in surveying the terrain and in deciding on the best route to take so that they can ultimately discover their own way. Existential counselling is a process of searching for the value and meaning in life. The counsellor's basic task is to encourage clients to explore their option for creating a meaningful existence. We can begin by recognising that we do not have to remain passive victims of our circumstances but instead can consciously become the architect of our life. Existential counselling helps people become more actualised, make rewarding use of their potential and experience a deep, perhaps spiritual connection with other people and their world. These goals are accomplished primarily through the special relationship between the counsellor and the client, an essential vehicle for change in existential counselling. Events of the early years of the 21st century, including terrorist attacks and wars, have established a climate of heightened anxiety, fears of death, and a sharpened sense of loneliness. Existential counselling seems well suited to addressing these concerns.
Now let us examine the existential counselling techniques and procedures. Although supported by a fully developed theory and philosophy, existentialism offers no set of techniques. May in the year 1983, Lance in the year 2004 explained that most therapies focus on science and research and counsellors because of their advanced knowledge of best interventions apply these approaches in the counselling context. However, existential counselling has a different approach. The process of treatment is an artistic process rather than a process of science. The crucial significance of the existential movement is that it reacts against the tendency to identify therapy with a set of techniques. Instead, it bases therapeutic practice on an understanding of what it means to be human. The existential movement stands for respect for the person, for exploring new aspects of human behavior and for divergent methods of understanding people. It uses numerous approaches to therapy based on its assumptions about human nature. The current focus of the existential approach is on clients who feel alone in the world and are facing the anxiety of this isolation. Rather than trying to develop rules for counseling, existential practitioners strive to understand these deep human experiences. May and Yalom, 1995. The existential view of human nature is captured in part by the notion that the significance of one's existence is never fixed, once and for all. Rather, we continually recreate ourselves through our projects. Humans are in a constant state of transition, emerging, evolving and becoming. Being a person implies that we are discovering and making sense of our existence. We continually question oneself, others, and the world. Although the specific questions we raise vary in accordance with our developmental stage in life, the fundamental themes do not vary. We pose questions such as, who am I? Who have I been? Where am I going? In most theories, understanding follows technique, but the existential counselor allows the approach to flow from the clients and the theory rather than from a generic intervention. Existential theory is steeped in phenomenological awareness. Therefore, the following intervention strategies flow from a respectful understanding of individual clients. First, telling the story. Finding the meaning of myth. In his last work, Rollo May, 1992, viewed myths as central to gaining existential meaning. And I quote, Each one of us is forced to do deliberately for oneself what in previous ages was done by family, custom, church and state, namely form the myths in terms of what we can make some sense of experience, unquote. May discussed the ways in which myths provide insight and meaning. In the counselling session, stories may be facilitative in helping clients understand events in their lives. Clients also create their story as they detail their past and future. The practitioner is viewing the client's history through the client's being and awareness rather than focusing on pathological development. As the story unfolds, the client can see the patterns from a larger perspective. I quote, healing through narration and opening up involve an existential act of self-transcendence of an embodied person who organizes his or her experience in time, unquote, Mishara in the year 1995. Life myths literally order and focus the world, giving life meaning and value. Second, sharing existential in the moment. The existential relationship is the primary counselling intervention and the client is an existential partner. The client is viewed with compassion, 
not met with pity or sympathy. The counsellor must be genuinely present on the sharp edge of existence in the world. As Bergenthal in the year 1978 asserted, I quote, Presence is the quality of being in a situation in which one intends to be as aware and as participative as one is able to be at that time and in those circumstances. Presence is carried into effect through mobilization of one's inner towards subjective experience and outer towards the situation and any other person in it, sensitivities. Presence is being there in the body, in emotions, in relating, in thoughts and in every way." Unquote. Lance, in the year 2004, used the terms participatory subjectivity and empathic understanding to capture the connectedness that exists in the counselling relationship. Emerging from the intervention is a deep sense of relatedness which Husher in the year 1987 and Miller in the year 2004 call love. As part of the relatedness and therapeutically significant, the counsellor must be able to use himself or herself as an indicator of what is occurring within the client. I quote, It is not possible to have a feeling without the other having it to some degree also. The use of one's self as an instrument requires a tremendous self-discipline on the part of the counsellor. Unquote. May in the year 1979. Being implies presence, but it also restrains the counsellor's own distortions, thoughts and feelings as he or she participates in the client's world. Third, centred awareness of being. The existential counsellor helps the client become more centred, more aware. The key is becoming consistently aware. Only by looking inward does the client develop insight and a keener awareness of being. The most important first step is becoming more conscious of reality and authentically examining the various aspects called self. Fourth, self-responsibility. Taking responsibility for growth is important, but taking responsibility for self-destructive actions is not easy. This intervention involves helping clients take ownership of their lives. First, they must be accountable for their choice. Equally important, they must let go of the responsibility that others own in the process of relating. Yalom in the year 2005. Being responsible, acknowledge that obligation can be assumed, shared and owned by others. Fifth, dream work. Counselors working in a variety of approaches have considered dreams as the window to the unconscious. In existential counselling, dreams have an additional usefulness. The focus is on the client's dynamic, immediately real and present existence viewed through the dream rather than the set of dynamic mechanisms at work. In the dream, we see the whole man, the entirety of his problems, in a different existential modality than in waking, but against the background and with the structure of a priori articulation of existence, and therefore the dream is also of paramount therapeutic importance for the existential analyst. Through dream work, the counsellor is able to help the client see the pattern of being in the world and know the possibilities of existence through the dream. At the end of life, dreaming may help resolve existential issues and bring peace. Although unsettling, the existential experience of dreams moves the individual closer to authenticity. Existential dreams deepen self-perception. Dreams are like insight. They provide a reflection of inner vision and the dreamer is compelled to discover their meaning. Sixth, disclosing and working through resistances. Addressing resistances to awareness requires a sensitive intervention 
and the counsellor is most effective when addressing issues supportively. This intervention creates both anxiety and joy for the client. Counsellors use comments such as, you can feel how much that way of being has cost you all of your life and you have wanted so much to be loved that you have often forgotten to take care of your own needs. The client owns the responsibility and the power to address the issues blocking awareness and authenticity. The counsellor serves as the midwife in the birth of a more authentic being. Seventh, body work. One of the more recent approaches using existential counselling involves the here and now in the physical context. Examples of this approach include painting, working with clay, working with wooden swords and body awareness exercises. Through the use of different artistic mediums, graphic and physical movement, existential counsellors have helped individuals express immediate concentrated meaning. In so doing, clients get beyond resistances to authenticity and greater awareness of being. 8. Confronting existential anxiety. Probably the most important intervention is being aware of the client's existential issues. The complex societal and individual reaction to death stirs complex emotions in most individuals. It takes courage to discuss the forbidden subject of death. As Yalom in the year 1980 said, and I quote, If we are to alter counselling practice, to harness the clinical leverage that the concept of death provides, it will be necessary to demonstrate the role of death in the genesis of anxiety, unquote. Sometimes this may be accomplished by a review of the client's life. In such interventions, individuals are encouraged to examine and resolve issues by focusing on their life stories. By confronting ultimate losses, for example, relationships, life and self, and by being present through the resultant anxiety, counsellors have a powerful tool to help individuals work through fear. Ninth, Closure Facing the end of the helping relationship is the final confrontation with reality. It is expected that additional issues will arise to delay the inevitable ending. The intervention of termination requires continued authenticity and willingness to be present. The counsellor and the client may never meet again. Paralleling every other loss in the lives of both the client and the counsellor, Termination represents a real death to both people. It is critical that the practitioner help the client by processing the ending of counselling by creating a good parting. The difficulty with this intervention is that it exposes the reality of ending that is present in all relationships. Van Dursen Smith reminds us that existential counselling is a collaborative venture in which both the client and the counsellor will be transformed if they allow themselves to be touched by life. The use of the counsellor's self is the core of counselling. It is in the I-Thou encounter when the deepest self of the counsellor meets the deepest part of the client that the counselling process is at its best. Counselling is a creative, evolving process of discovery that can be conceptualized in three general phases. During the initial phase, counsellors assist clients in identifying and clarifying their assumptions about the world. Clients are invited to define and question the ways in which they perceive and make sense of their existence. They examine their values, beliefs and assumptions to determine their validity. This is a difficult task for many clients because they may initially present their problems as resulting almost entirely from external causes. They may focus on what other people make them feel or on how others are largely responsible for their actions or inaction. They may focus on what other people make them feel or on how others are largely responsible for their actions or inaction. 
the counselor teaches them how to reflect on their own existence and examine their role in creating their problems in living during the middle phase of existential counseling clients are encouraged to more fully examine the source and authority of their present value system this process of self exploration typically leads to new insight and some restructuring of their values and attitudes clients get a better idea of what kind of life they consider worthy to live and develop a clearer sense of their internal valuing process the final phase of existential counseling focuses on helping clients take what they are learning about themselves and put it into action the aim of counseling is to enable clients to find ways of implementing their examined and internalized values in a concrete way clients typically discover their strengths and find ways to put them to the service of living a purposeful existence in order to gain a better understanding let us apply the existential approach to the case of jonathan jonathan's concerns reflect an existential struggle with death isolation freedom and meaninglessness The death of his brother caused an early trauma that Jonathan has not been able to fully address. He has not been able to find himself in a satisfying relationship and has battled depression and loneliness. No one has validated his pain or acknowledged his loss of self in the world. Jonathan challenged cultural traditions by leaving the reservation. He seems torn between two worlds that are incompatible. Cultural and family expectations have affected his work and the recent pressure to return home to the reservation and care for his aging parents. Confronting this loss of self, of identity, Jonathan experiences existential isolation and despair. To find meaning or to escape from finding it, he has become depressed. developed problems at work moved from relationship to relationship disconnected from his family and abused alcohol still his anger fear and frustration are clearly a result of a crisis of selfhood the life jonathan has constructed is fragile and he realizes the exigency of the situation his nightmares reflect his lack of purpose and direction in life and his angry and helpless reaction to it he has difficulty in maintaining a job or relationships in the past jonathan has been able to cope by finding meaning in and through others through new relationships ultimately his choices have never filled the void left by the death of his brother the potential loss of his freedom that would follow a return to the reservation seems to have intensified the nightmares as well as his deteriorating relationship at work financial problems drinking and likely permanent separation from his current wife however his flight through others has never been fulfilling and now he is alone with building responsibilities he feels unable to handle The problems in being able to find other meaningful work are compounded by encountering prejudice. Although Jonathan attempts to distance himself from his culture, he continues to be faced by it. In trying once more to escape his problems, he is having increased difficulty and is alone with the laughing driver on a bus going nowhere he wants to go. an example of one of his dreams for jonathan alcohol has also proven ineffective in helping him find respite in facing his life without culture and with increased pressures to create a new meaning out of his painful past jonathan has no way to turn to escape he is left alone and afraid treatment and intervention plan 
Jonathan's desire to work on the issues is of paramount importance. His current depression and hopelessness could be paralyzing. A medication consultation may be necessary if his depression does not abate. Alcohol abuse needs to be assessed. Because his current defense of withdrawal and escape were not working, he was asked to come to counseling by his supervisor. His lateness to the session indicates he is reticent and careful, but the amount of information he provided shows openness to the process. His current pain may be a positive factor in motivating him to change. The goal of counselling will be to help gain an understanding of Jonathan's current condition. In this process, Jonathan will also gain perspective on his situation. First, it will be important to discuss his cultural background and any feelings he has about the counselling or psychotherapy experience as well as any cultural differences or similarities that may exist between Jonathan and the counsellor or psychotherapist. Also, it will be important to discuss the gender of the counsellor or psychotherapist with Jonathan. If he has any concerns about this, a referral will need to be made immediately. Next, it will be important to hear Jonathan's story. In telling his struggle and pain, Jonathan needs to be heard and validated. He will be facing his fears while he focuses on the issues prompting the depression, that is the death and his responsibility for it of his brother, the separation from his family, separation from his current wife and any feelings he has about the problem in these relationships, the difficulty living in a predominantly different culture the relationships with his children, the use of alcohol to escape, and his career identity, currently working in a residential drug and alcohol treatment program for adolescents. In all areas, Jonathan experienced loss and meaninglessness, leading to hopelessness. In spite of everything, however, he has persisted. Ultimately, he will gain freedom and understanding by acknowledging his struggle and being heard and respected by the counsellor or psychotherapist. He will also have counsellor or psychotherapist with him as he confronts his anxiety about having to decide what to do next and whether to return to the reservation. Jonathan has made choices that were unpopular with his spouse's family and culture. Jonathan's withdrawal has occurred over several years and relationships and has been in reaction to external pressures which are now increasing as a result of family issues, problems at work, financial issues, relationship problems, increased drinking and his general affect. Jonathan has not been able to move beyond his feelings of responsibility over his brother's death when Jonathan was 16. He has developed a pattern of detaching from relationships, which has been difficult in view of the pressures from his culture to be intricately connected. Jonathan has not been true to himself or others, and that has left him isolated in a world without meaning or direction. Case Analysis the first phase of treatment will be developing a therapeutic relationship because Jonathan has been victimized by his culture and the majority culture, developing trust and groundwork for the I to thou relationship is important for counseling or psychotherapy to begin. A concurrent component is helping to assess the extent of alcohol use and abuse. Counseling or psychotherapy will not be effective if Jonathan is under the influence of alcohol. In the past, he has sought to detach in relationships. Now Jonathan will need to be committed to working through these issues that continue to follow him from relationship to relationship and job to job. By addressing the score aspect of self, he can gain power over his life and his choices. 
the dream seems to be a revealing of his sense of powerlessness, frustration and lack of direction. The ideal and final interpretation will be made by Jonathan, but the following discussion emerges from existential interpretation. Jonathan's real self is confronting his sense of lack of direction and ultimate aloneness in a situation where he feels powerless. Alone with the bus driver who does not listen and laughs at him. The culture, that is, bus that the riders feel is going everywhere, seems to be going nowhere in particular. Although he had a ticket to Albariki, that is his home, he feels trapped. No one has time to get off at the bus stop. His anger, pounding on the steering wheel, only serves to make everyone else disappear. He is left alone and unable to have any power over where he is going on a bus with a driver who laughs at his desire for help. It could be that he is the bus driver detached from his own desire to find his way home. He cannot figure out how to escape from his situation and is afraid and angry. This shows that Jonathan is focused and motivated to confront these aspects of himself and his world. He would welcome someone to help him to deal with his helplessness feelings. Escape no longer is providing solace. He has not been able to find home. There is a sense he may be ready to change. The counsellor or psychotherapist will help Jonathan confront the anxiety of death by meeting his fears of loss and engulfment and encountering the aspects of himself that are painful and angry, he will sense all that he has encountered and survived. Jonathan will also develop a stronger sense of himself and his responsibility for making his own choices. He can find a place in the world that is not bound by the bus, the driver or the people without direction. By continuing to flee from relationships, work and life, Jonathan avoids being and living. He is trapped in his fears by his substance abuse, depression and isolation. Counseling or psychotherapy will involve helping Jonathan on his journey as he encounters the fears embodied by the individuals on the bus and the frustration of not having control over his life. It will be important for the counsellor not to fall into the easy pattern of offering him insight or direction, giving another voice to where the bus is destined. Instead, Jonathan needs to integrate his own voice and sense of self. This will occur through the process of validating his losses and his pain understanding his cultural pressures and helping him to find meaning in himself and his existence. The path or the bus he has taken thus far has not gotten him where he wants to go or provided any relationships or understanding. He has felt alone, out of control, angry and afraid. The counsellor is providing a context of relating that will help Jonathan to learn that his escape from others through drinking, his not staying committed in relationship and his not knowing how he wants to deal with his family only keep him mired in anxiety and depression. By facing his insecurities and losses, he will gain a sense of inner strength, awareness and self. By taking responsibility, that is getting behind the wheel, he can realize the freedom he has to be himself and choose as well as to be responsible for his choices. Once he has recognized his power and responsibility, he can be himself in relation to others. He will no longer be alone. Group counseling and support for alcohol abuse, especially with others struggling with cultural issues, might be helpful when Jonathan has developed a better sense of himself. The group would allow Jonathan to connect with others with similar struggles, to validate his pain and his struggles, 
to make peace with himself and to develop healthier ways of relating to others and making choices. Let us sum up. As humans, according to the existential view, we are capable of self-awareness, which is the distinctive capacity that allows us to reflect and to decide. With this awareness, we become free beings who are responsible for choosing the way we live and we thus influence our own destiny. This awareness of freedom and responsibility gives rise to existential anxiety, which is another basic human characteristic. Whether we like it or not, we are free, even though we may seek to avoid reflecting on this freedom. The knowledge that we must choose, even though the outcome is not certain, leads to anxiety. This anxiety is heightened when we reflect on the reality that we are mortal beings. Facing the inevitable prospect of eventual death gives the present moment significance, for we become aware that we do not have forever to accomplish our projects. Our task is to create a life that has meaning and purpose. Whatever meaning our life has is developed through freedom and the commitment to make choices in the face of uncertainty. Existential counselling places central prominence on the person-to-person -person relationship. It assumes that client growth occurs through this genuine encounter. It is not the techniques a counsellor uses that make therapeutic difference. Rather, it is the quality of the client-counsellor relationship that heals. Although existential counsellors may apply techniques from other orientations, their interventions are guided by a philosophical framework about what it means to be human.